Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everything 101. I am super excited about this episode because tonight I get to sit down and chat with a legend. Yes, she is a naked and afraid legend. The one, the only, Gabrielle Balasson. She is my favorite on the Survivalist show. And I'm so excited to sit down and ask her all of my fan questions. So I'm really excited about this. Let's get to it. All right, well, guys, I am uh, so honored to welcome Miss Gabrielle Balasson. Gabby, thank you so much for hanging out with me. This is amazing. Of course, you're very welcome, Danny. I'm happy to be here. I thank you, thank mm -hmm. you. So I, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a, a big fan of the show, and I, as I've told you, you're my favorite of all of them. So mm -hmm. I'm, I, I, I talk to people. I'm gonna, I'm gonna interview Gabrielle, and she's, she's the best one out there. So <laughs> this is pretty amazing. So. That is so cool. I'm glad. I'm glad you feel that way. Thank you. Have you have you watched it since the beginning? Yes, and I, I think I mentioned last week I got strep, so I I binged. <laughs> I just lay there and watched episodes for two days straight. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, you, you, okay. So not you're not only just a survivalist; you're actually an attorney. That's correct. So, um, graduated from law school in 2018. Mm -hmm. um, passed my bar, and um, so now I practice. Uh, corporate law. I'm um, a, a general counsel, in-house general counsel for a defense contractor, 175 mm -hmm. person company. Um, so it's a pretty good gig. Yeah. Awesome. So I, I, I was watching your live on Facebook and I, I guess it's uh, it's a little bit of a challenge to get off work sometimes, right? I guess. It's really difficult when they ask for these like, you know, 40 or 45 or 60 day challenges. It's mm -hmm. really difficult to leave work. Yeah, absolutely. So for mm -hmm. anybody that's new to your story, can you just, I, I don't want you to answer the same questions you've answered a hundred times, but can you just give a quick background of like how you got into being a survivalist? You know, was it in your upbringing? Yeah, of course. Um, so first of all, I don't really consider myself a, you know, like a practice survivalist, like your traditional survivalist. Um, mm -hmm. I'm actually just a country person. I'm from um, a little farming community called Westminster, Maryland. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm actually on the outskirts of Westminster, so I'm in a, in a little tech community called Silver Run. Um, I grew up riding horses and dirt bikes and four wheelers and, you know, playing in farm ponds and fishing and um, barefoot most of the time, catching snakes and turtles and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm not your traditional survivalist, but I, I know how to start a fire, right? I know how to yeah. camp. I know how to uh, uh, build things and, and really just uh, adapt to circumstances and, and problem solve. Right. Yeah. So that's my background. And, mm -hmm. um, uh, so I applied for the show. Uh, I was still in law school. Actually, it was my, I think second year of law school. Um, no, it might've been my first year over the summertime. And, um, they, uh, I guess recruited me or they signed me up for a, a fan challenge. So I started as a fan of Naked and Afraid and um, kind of worked my way through the system. Um, at this point, I've done a 14 day fan challenge in South Africa, mm -hmm. 21 in Mississippi, uh, 40 in the Philippines on Naked and Afraid XL. And yeah. then my most recent challenge was Naked and Afraid XL Frozen um, in Montana. Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I don't know how you did that. That's crazy. <laughs> so, it was something else. I, I bet. Um, okay. So I, I'm just curious when you, when you got the first phone call for the very first episode, yeah, I mean, how did, were you just freaking out? How did your family react? Oh yeah. So at the time, um, I was, I had a little boy, he mm -hmm. was like 15 months old and, um, and I was actually uh, living on my dad's farm and my, my husband now but mm -hmm. um he and I were not together at the time um so I was you know kind of doing things by myself um single mom life and um so my dad was excited he's been he was a survivor fan for the longest time and he's always believed in me and and oh, believed yeah. that that I was capable of you know anything I put my mind to so mm -hmm. so I think when I got that first uh call back after auditions and he said uh you know, they told me I was heading to South Africa. My dad was like my biggest fan. He was so excited for me yeah, um, and willing to do whatever to support me. That's amazing. Yeah. 
it, you know, everybody talks about the nudity aspect of the show, but I mean, mm-hmm. th- honestly, does that just quickly become secondary? That something that's just really not noticed after a while. Um, like 15 minutes in like 15 minutes, you stop being self-conscious. Um, and it was really easy for me because I got out there. My, my first partner was just such a lovely guy that, um, I had no qualms with being naked after a few minutes because your brain goes to, Hey, the sun's going down. I need to build a shelter. I need to start a fire. I need to find water. Um, and all these things have to happen in like the next five. So you forget it. Yeah. I bet. All right. So, um, I've always been curious, you know, when you get out there, it's day two or three and the hunger, the thirst starts to set in. What, what is, what are you physically feeling? I mean, is it nausea? Is it headache or is it all of the above? So it's, it's interesting you ask this question. Um, so it varies person to person. Um, what I will say is that when you start seeing people on day three, feeling real lousy, Mm -hmm. it's usually because they did not properly, um, detox or did not properly come off of things like caffeine before they left. Um, Sugars, caffeine, alcohol, cigarettes. I mean, I've, I've been going out on location with people who have like, they're smoking cigarettes on the way to the, to the uh, insertion. Um, And those are the people that you see struggle, right? Because, you know, I don't know. Are you a caffeine person? Do you drink coffee? Uh, Yeah. That's about it. Not a whole lot of caffeine other than that, but I always start with coffee. Yeah. I always start with coffee too. And when I'm going on a challenge, I cut out coffee somewhere between 45 and 30 days before my challenge, because it gives me a headache. I get my migraines after I start start cutting it out. And um, last thing I want to be dealing with is migraines three days into a challenge. Yep. Um, So for me personally, um, I find that your body goes into like um, almost an instant like ketosis or like a Uh, if you've done the keto diet it's called ketosis where your brain kind of um gets kind of clear almost Mm -hmm. um and i I honestly start feeling better about you know three four or five days in when you when that starvation hits wow okay yeah yeah i I remember one episode in particular where i I remember some i don't even remember his name but some guy was smoking and i thought this guy's not going to make it because i mean just the withdrawal alone is going to take him out and sure enough Mm -hmm. i think he if i remember right he was out so, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I was just going to say you, you've been in different challenges. So how did you prepare differently for each one? Or is it the same other than cutting things out? So I, I think the preparation is a little bit different depending on where you're going. Um, obviously, you try and do some research on the area where you're going. Mm-hmm. Um, for this particular frozen challenge I was on, Um, I cut up all of my old towels and, and sewed shoes, um, so that I could learn like the best patterns for making shoes, because I thought that was going to be such an imperative integral part of the challenge. Um, so my kids, like they, they had the most fun with it because I would make like little shoes and, you know, they could wear my, my little stockings around the house. (laughs) Um, you know, but, but it's so important. Like if you, if you don't have a good pattern for that type of stuff, Mm -hmm. Um, or you've never made it before, you're going to cut it wrong. And you only have one, one pelt that to make shoes out of. So you don't want to be, you know, messing up your patterns. Yeah. You Um, have it down. Yeah. 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 So that was one thing. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, I try and if I'm going somewhere near the equator, I try and get a good base tan before I go out. Mm -hmm. Um, cause nothing worse than getting, you know, terrible sunburn a couple days in. Oh yeah. Um, you know, I try and I actually go on like a milkshake diet. I try and get as much fat in my system as I possibly can before I go out. Mm-hmm. Um, because I find that you're going to be better off if you do have a little bit of fat reserves on your body. Mm-hmm. Um, and okay. I'm always barefoot. So that's, it's not really preparation, but you know, it's, <laughs> it's my life. <laughs> I hear you. So, wow. you, you know, a lot of people say that, I mean, I hear this all the time. Reality TV isn't a hundred percent reality, but Fair. I don't know. I'm thinking naked and afraid. The rules are pretty stringent. If I'm not mistaken, it, it would you see on TV? Is that pretty much what you get? Yeah. So if, if you talk to the producers, they'll tell you this, they'll tell you um, the first and last day are more produced than the rest of it. Right. So the first and last day, there has to be like insertion, right? So there has yeah. to be a map scene and there has to be a meeting scene and these things have to happen out there and they might have to film you doing that two times, three times, right? Because they have to get all the angles. Um, 
but that's about as fake as it gets, right? So that's, you know, that's something where, it, you know, you have to go through the, go through the rigmarole. Um, but the people that you're out there working with, the crew, they are documentary style producers. They want to see you in your rare form. They mm -hmm. want to see it raw. They want to see how you're surviving without any intrusion, without any people intervening. So they, they're there to capture your experience, just like a documentary would. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's what you're getting. Um, I will say that, you know, you're not seeing the entirety of the, of what's recorded out there. Um, so obviously, especially on a big challenge where there's four different cameras, let's say like an XL and there's a ton of footage, they have to choose, pick and choose a storyline to stick with. Right. Yeah, so, right. but they can't show things that aren't there, you know, and um, it's real. Like they're not feeding us. I have people ask, are you really naked? Yes, we're really naked. There's no clothes. Um, like there's, you know, it's it, it's as as real I think as television can possibly be. Yeah, I I just have to ask. I mean, do, is your I hope this isn't too personal, but it, it, you know, people ask <laughs> your spouse has he been uh, has it been tough to accept the fact that you're out there and you're not wearing anything with other people? Uh, I don't know. That might be tough for some spouses to deal so, with. Yeah, I mean, I know it's tough on some relationships. Um, I, that's, you know, a well-known fact in the community. Um, I will, you know, especially if there's insecurities there. Yeah. Um, I will say my husband was not very excited when I went on on the first one. Um, mm -hmm. But at the time, we were not together. So yeah. uh, he didn't have much choice in the matter. Yeah. And then by the time the second offer came around, he was like, well, you've already done it once. And, and he knows how important it is to me and how much right. I enjoy the experience. Mm -hmm. So I think that outweighs any apprehension that he might have. And he also knows, you know, Danny, it's it's not about like the, Kai says this often, but she yeah. says the only people who don't like naked and afraid are people that have never seen it. So there's people that see the title and they're like, oh, naked nudity, you know, oh, yeah. it has to be sexual, sexualized, no. but it's not. Um, if you think about it, clothing is our first form of shelter, right? And mm -hmm. there are so many things you can do with that. You can take a pair of socks and catch a fish, right? So there's a lot, <laughs> yeah. you know, there's a ton of things you can do. You can filter water, you can burn it, you know, it can be, it mm -hmm. can be tinder. They don't want to give you that, first of all, a survival tool. They don't want to give you something to keep you warm. They want to see you in your most vulnerable form. And there's also a psychological aspect of having no clothes to rely on. Yeah. So um, I think he understands that, uh, the challenge is not sexualized and that, you know, you are naked, but um, that's, that's strictly a, you know, just a characteristic of the show. It's, it has nothing to do with, with anything but survival. Right. Right. Definitely. So looking back on all your experiences, what has been your favorite place where you've done a challenge? Um, oh gosh. So both the Philippines and South Africa were just extraordinarily beautiful. Um, this most recent one was right outside of Yellowstone. Um, the producers oh, wow. of the show scout locations all over the world, best places on the planet. They have the best job on the planet. Mm -hmm. Um, so honestly, I don't know that I can pick one. Um, yeah, I mean, they're just, I mean, Palawan, where I was in the Philippines, was rated the best island in the world by Tribal Leisure Magazine in 2018. Um, it is just j just gorgeous. Yeah. Wow. So what are the best and worst things you've eaten during a challenge? <laughs> because I've seen some pretty, mm, uh, all right. pretty interesting things. Yeah. There's some gnarly stuff. Um, one of like surprisingly best would be uh, hermit crabs. Mm -hmm. um, they are the, like the other lobster. Um, yeah. Box turtles are also very good. And Viper was good. Um, green bananas were good. I have a lot of, a lot of food out there that was fantastic oh and there were these grapes in mississippi i don't know they're like i i don't know they, they're like wild grapes they were so delicious um so sugary but really good yeah. um worst thing probably uh so i had a sea cucumber in the philippines um oh. that was terrible and then also um oh i had a good one for you oh i went out in africa i was eating frogs but i was eating them whole and they were they're were pretty yucky oh well, wow. I'm just totally curious. Is there anything in your, like when you're home, your everyday life, is there anything you won't eat? Anything I won't eat? No. Now, like my, my kids will be eating something and their hot dog will roll off their plate into the dirt and I'll tell them, hey, you know, suck it up. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So when, when you're on a challenge, do you have 
any contact with your family at all? I mean, do the producers help you keep in touch or anything? No, I, they don't, they don't keep in, keep you in touch. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to speak to this, but there is one opportunity to receive a letter at some point in time. Um, if you're on a very, very extended challenge, okay. only in the event you're on a very extended challenge. And I don't know if that's all the time, but I think um, that happens on certain um, extended challenges. Okay. And I think that news is out there, but um, you know, but uh, in general, there's no contact. They won't tell you what the sports scores are that the world series is going on. They don't care. Um, or if, presidential election season's going on they're not going to tell you what happened wow you find out when you get back <laughs> wow so do you okay so you're you're meeting this person for the first time on the challenge you've never met them before i would mm -hmm. think that though once you get out there does all sense of i, I don't know I mean, you've already talked about the nudity aspect but i mean does all sense of modesty just privacy does it just go away i mean because i mean let's say you have stomach problems everybody knows it sure does it yeah just i mean give up? there is like a... <laughs> so so this is funny i think it probably is situational but um i find that there's still like a very politeness uh like a mm -hmm. politeness that happens amongst polite people right so yeah. if you're not somebody that typically like parts in front of a group for example yeah. <laughs> um, you, you you still you're still not going to do that out there, right? And mm -hmm. you do your best to get outside the shelter to you know bodily functions happen outside, yeah. outside the shelter elsewhere, things like that. So I don't think all modesty goes out the window. I think you try and maintain it to the best of your ability, but obviously there's you're in pretty co close quarters a lot of times. Right, right. So I don't. I'm not here to you know bring up any names or anything like that, but. Do you, have you had partners that you have kind of found difficult or is that something you can discuss? I don't want to, I'd like to say, I don't want to slander anybody or, because people like me watch the show. Sure. Yeah. So, uh, you know, anybody that you're going to be out there with for an extended period, you're going to have, you know, quarrels with, um, for the most part, I've gotten along great with my partners. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I think any points of contention you can probably easily see on my uh, on my challenges. But I will tell you, like the most draining aspects, like if if you have a partner out there um, who's mentally given up, or they, you mm -hmm. know, they in their head uh, have decided that they're ready to tap out. Yeah, I told production like don't try and make them stay um, because all they're gonna do is kind of be an emotional drain on you as their partner. Um, Basically, if you're not out there and you're willing to give it, you know, 110 percent, then I don't want you out there. Yeah. Um, and those are the ones that, you know, to, to me, those are the partners that I struggle with. Yeah, I, I have. A, this is just totally a personal question. You mentioned migraines a while ago and I get those. Sure. And I, every time I watch the show, I sit there and think, what would I do if I were out there and I got a migraine? Is there yeah. any help whatsoever or is it just you're on your own? Um, you, I, I've never had that circumstance and I've never seen it out there. So I'm not sure whether they, the medics would intervene. I kind of think they would not, it would probably lead you to try and sleep it off or honestly, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I honestly don't get them often. And when I do, it's like from a chemical withdrawal, like caffeine, when I come off of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so I can't speak to it. Um, I have seen people that are really struggling and the, the medics will come in and take your vitals to see mm. like if there's anything physiologically wrong with you. And if there's not, then they're like, sorry about your luck, man. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. That would be horrible. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, okay. So talking about partners I, and again, no names, but on one of your challenge, the most cringe worthy thing I've ever seen on Naked and Afraid was in one of your episodes. You show up, meet your partner mm -hmm. and he has just gone on about, you know, how he grew up with the woman doing womanly things and which I, I don't, I'm not down with that stuff, but anyway, uh, he, he looks at you and he says, do you know what this is? And he's holding a yeah. fire starter. I just, I'm sitting there thinking I've got to ask, cause I watched this the other day and I said, I've got to ask her, what were you thinking in that moment? Did you want to just go, seriously no I, 
I, I didn't even know how to respond in that moment. And I think you can probably read my facial expression from that scene <laughs> yes. on my face. because It was, it was absolutely, I mean, really you have no business being out there if you've not started a fire with a fire starter. Right. And besides that, I'd already spent 14 days, nine of those by myself out in my right. first town. Exactly. And, um, even that that I could could indeed start a fire. Um, and the best part is that, that I went on to be the person that started the fire in this, in this location as well, right? I was uh, laughing so hard. Oh, it, it was it was funny. Uh, yeah, yeah, funny, not funny, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jeez. You keep up with Kai, I know. And yes. uh, because you guys are doing some things together, who else uh, do you keep up with any of the other survivalists? Yeah, so I'm actually really good friends with Riley as well. Um, mm -hmm. Riley, we were in season XL5 together, and she is awesome, she's an awesome survivalist, and also like the funniest person I've ever met. Um, so I'm actually in her wedding in November, so oh, that'll nice. be exciting. Yeah, so we, we're definitely close friends. Um, Aside from that, um, I talk to, you know, a lot of my other partners, um, mm -hmm. maybe a couple times a year, we'll text back and forth, we'll, you know, something will remind us of something funny that happened out there, and we'll just check up on one another. Mm -hmm. um, really love James Lewis, uh, who is a partner of mine on XL5 as well. He is, mm -hmm. you know, legitimately one of the nicest people out there. So um, I do keep keep in touch with folks. I also love meeting new naked and afraid folks who, you know, I've never actually been on a challenge with, but, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's still fun to meet them. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm a language geek. Uh, I'm actually a language teacher. So I, I'm just curious. Yeah. And I'm curious, do you speak any other languages or can you get, I by? don't, I, okay. I spoke um, French in high school. I, uh, I think went up French for my husband is, is Hispanic though. And he's Spanish speaking, uh, Spanish is his first language. So nice. I understand a lot, um, especially uh -huh. when I'm hanging out with his family, but I don't speak any. Right. Well, that's cool. I'm what, just curious. because what, what, what is your language? Uh, I speak Spanish and French fluently mm -hmm. and I'm conversant in Dutch. I'm not fluent, but I need to become fluent in Dutch. But, that is so cool. Oh, thank you. Are you going to the Netherlands or where are you heading? Uh, well, I, I'm, I'd love to go back to the Netherlands, but um, I don't know. I have so many other things going right now that I don't know when I'll get back. So <laughs> I get that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I know you probably can't tell me if anything is coming up on Naked and Afraid. I, my family is pretty big into the film industry here in Atlanta. And so I know how you got to sign those papers. But uh, mm -hmm. anything that you see maybe as a possibility in the horizon, are you open to new challenges? You know, like I told you, it's tough for me to get off of these long ones. Yeah. but. I'm, I'm always willing to listen. Whenever a producer's calling, I pick up the phone because I'm willing to entertain ideas. Um, I've, I've enjoyed getting to know this industry and being a part of this industry. Um, I also love the messages I get, right? For, mm -hmm. From young fans and female fans and, you know, young, you know, people in my community, yeah, little, little boys who are out in, you know, in their creeks and, and just enjoying nature. And um, I love that aspect of it. So, you know, if something, if an opportunity were to pop up later to, you know, do more survival television, I would absolutely do that. Nice. Nice. Well, I, you know, I wanted to see if I could end with giving you a, a speed round, um, 10 question about you personally, if that's okay. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Favorite food. Ooh, a macaroni and cheese. Okay. I like, can't argue with that. Favorite drink. <laughs> um, red wine. Favorite movie of all time. Ooh, probably Forrest Gump. Favorite song of all time? Mm, I'm a Beatles fan, I'd say. Mm -hmm. um, ooh, Hey Jude, probably. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, favorite band? Uh, the Beatles. The Beatles, okay. So favorite country you've ever visited? Ooh, Australia. Your husband is taking you to your absolute favorite restaurant. Where are you going? We're going to a little sushi place down the road. <laughs> awesome. Mm -hmm. Favorite survivalist you've ever worked with? Probably Kai for now. Mm -hmm. Legend. If you could she meet, yes, if you could meet any celebrity right now, who would it be? 
Ooh, um, Marty Stauffer. Is he a celebrity? I don't know, but. <laughs> sure. <laughs> He's a, yeah. He is in my world. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So if you had to live the rest of your life off the grid, where would it be? Uh, Costa Rica. Oh, okay. I've been there a lot. That's a great country. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Gabby, I don't want to take up any more of your time. I, I just want to thank you so much for hanging out with me. This has been absolutely amazing. I'm a big fan of yours. And oh. I tell people this, I, I like, you know, I, like I said, our family has done a lot in the film industry. Um, I've met tons of celebrities and I'm, used, I'm not really impressed, but when you meet somebody that's your favorite, it's a pretty, oh. it's a pretty big deal. So this has been cool. Hey, Danny, thank you for having me. This has been cool. And oh, um, thank you. You know, I look forward to seeing you hopefully in a couple of days here. I hope so. Maybe, maybe Friday night, I'll make it. <laughs> See what happens. All right, All right. Thank you. Best to yeah, you and your family. Have, thank you. Have a good night. You mm -hmm. too. See ya. Well, I want to sincerely thank Gabby for sitting down and chatting with me. It was so great to finally ask my questions and uh, just to be able to chat with her was amazing. But hey, stick around for more great content right here on Everything 101. And until I see you again, I wish for you and all your family and friends peace and blessings. I'll see you soon.